Hello guys, good day. Welcome to our lesson for today. It's all about a, the basic computing, the introduction of computer. Uh, the history of it, I will share to you now the screen. Can you see the screen? I will zoom it out. Okay. We will know now the early computing device, the evolution of computers, Classification, classification of computers, the components of a computer, and also the categorization of software. Early calculating devices, um, such as Abacus, long time ago, it was developed in China. This is an example of an Abacus here, a pointer with different um, beads. Blue, red, yellow, green, used as an calculate calculation such as addition and subtraction. Usually, Chinese are businessmen, so they use it for business. Then we also have early calculating devices such as Napier's phones. It was developed by Sir John Napier in 1616. The device was used to perform calculations involving addition, subtraction multiplication and division. It was named so as the numbers were carved on bones or strips of wood. And then we also have Napier's bones here. The Pascaline, this is the Pascaline, sample of Pascaline. One of the first mechanical calculator was invented by Blaise Pascal in 1641. Though it could perform only subtraction and addition, yet it became very popular. Imagine this is your cell phone, so big in 1641. Then we also have first generation computers such, such as vacuum tube based computers. In the evolution of computers, the first generation was characterized by the use of vacuum tubes. The first generation computers were built to solve physics equations using electronic vacuum tube as the switching components. This used machine language. A machine language is a low-level programming language and is written in strong, long strings of zeros and one computing. So computers, by the way, can only understand zeros and one in the machine language level, low level. Machine language varies with the computer use. The first generation computers were expensive and bulky. The vacuum tube did not support multitasking, Programs written in machine language were cumbersome and difficult to remember. So imagine the, uh, the computer before is as big as this classroom. Um, in fact, in here are examples of it. It's like having a computer in a large classroom and only to calculate uh, numbers. Simple addition and subtraction. Then we also have second generation computers. These are transistor based computers. So transistors were invent invented already in 1960s. Computers belonging to this generation use punch cards for input. Uh, instead of uh, the usual a CD or hard disk or USB in, in saving their files, they use punch card. So this is an example of the second generation computers you can see on the screen. And they also use assembly language, which is a low level programming language. An assembly language is based on English alphabet, so A, B, C, D, C. And it's written in the form of codes. So there's a coding also in that. Uh, year 1960s during the year of our great grandfather perhaps our father 
We also have third generation computer. This is the time when IC or integrated circuits were invented. So those small transistors were placed on silicon chips called semiconductors to increase the speed and efficiency of a computer. The third generation computers were based on high level language. A high level language uses the English alphabet and mathematical system symbols. It's easy to use and understand. It is not machine dependent. The programs written in high level language such as such are called source programs. For example, we have here C. We use QBasic and Java are a few examples of high languages. These are old computers in a third generation here. We can see in the screen. Then we also have fourth generation computers. Microcomputers in introduction of microprocessors was the hallmark of fourth generation computers. They facilitated automation of industrial process and office. Around 1970, this technology of placing thousands of integrated circuits into a single chip that made a microprocessor was made available. So the transistors, the semiconductors were made up into smaller and smaller microprocessor. Compact and easy to maintain, it has a high processing speed. However, it has a limitation in size of data. So this is a fourth generation Core i7 microprocessor. Then we are now in the fifth generation computers, AI. The development of fifth generation computers is underway. They're going to be based on the principles of AI and natural language recognition. This technique will be used to design robots. So robots, robots are here already in our midst. Then we also have developers are aiming to develop computers capable of organizing themselves. So the evolution of computers still continues until now. Guys, there are a classification of computers. On the basis of their size and speed, computers are generally classified as to follows. We have microcomputer, mini computer, mainframe computer, and supercomputer. So this is this are the example here. We have here desktop, laptop, tablet, and smartphones. So even smartphones like this are already part of microcomputer. We also have mini computer. This one is an example of a mini computer, but are more expensive. Then the mainframe computers are very large, open filing an entire room. They can store enormous amount of data. So the mainframe computer, just like Amazon, Yahoo, Google, they use a mainframe computers for the big, huge data they have. Same way with supercomputer, uh, it's used to nuclear research, weather forecasting, animation graphics. These supercomputers needed really to a big company in order for them to conduct nuclear research work, for example, petroleum research works like crypt analysis, molecular model, and the likes, like NASA and chemical company multinational company um, really need uh, supercomputers for their product to be generated. So let's move on to the functions of components of a computer. The functions components of computers are input, central processing unit, and output devices. So this is input devices. Example of input devices are keyboard and mouse. It will go to the CPU, the brain of the computer is the CPU. We have the motherboard and all the stuff in the CPU. And he will process it, control everything, and extract the output. So when the CPU process your keyboard, it will appear in the screen and the output would be in the monitor or in the projector or in the printer output devices. The input and output devices that are attached to a computer are called computer peripherals. Again, these are examples of input devices.
devices. We have here barcode used in a computer store. We also have magnetic ink character recognition in ICR reader. We have optimic optical mark recognition reader, this one. Then we also have central processing unit composed of ALU, arithmetic logic unit. As I've said, it's the center of a computer, CPU, central processing unit. While ALU is part of CPU, which is arithmetic logic unit, which performs all the arithmetic logic operations to the computer. Under it, also of a CPU, aside from ALU or ALU, we have CU or control unit. It controls and guides the process of data and information. And then we also have memory unit. Just like humans, we also have a memory. So computers have it also. The various me measurement of units of computer memory are given here, like bit. Bit is the binary digit, which is two possible bits or zeros or one. And um, byte is a group of eight bits, it's called a byte. And a nibble is a group of four bits, it's called a nibble. So these are examples of the units interrelation chip is given below. Like one byte is equal to eight bits, 1024 bytes is equal to one kilobyte, and 1024 kilobyte, one megabyte, 1024 megabyte, one giga. 1024 gigabyte, one tera, and then so on and so forth. Again, to review again, the memory is basically of two types. We have primary memory and secondary memory. The primary memory composed of RAM and ROM. And the secondary memory is composed of compact disk, hard disk, floppy disk, and flash drive. So primary memory is the basic requirement of computers. While RAM is volatile, ROM is also non-volatile. When we say RAM, it's random access memory. The difference between RAM and ROM are the following. ROM stands for read-only read memory. RAM is temporary, while ROM is permanent. RAM is volatile in nature, and ROM is non-volatile. So meaning, RAM is designed to clear when the computer is not on, but ROM is not cleared when the computer is not on. RAM is the main eternal storage area that a computer uses to run a program and start, while well, ROM is a built-in computer memory that can be re read or read by a computer, but cannot be edited or modified. So we also have secondary memory, or also as an auxiliary memory, can be in the form of floppy disk, hard disk, compact disk, USB drive, and external drives, so on and so forth. The CPU cannot access secondary memory directly while processing information. The data is transferred to the primary, primary memory when required. So we're done with the CPU. We're now here in the output unit. Example of it is projector. We also have platters. This is an example of LCD projector. The platters are big printer, like ink platter, flatbed platter, and drum platter. For you, before we end this discussion, make a list of at least input and output devices available in the market. Have we heard about flash drive? What is its use? Make a list of compute storage devices available in the market. We will end our discussion for today. For next uh, topic, it would be the categorization of software. Thank you for listening, guys, and see you next meeting. Bye-bye. Don't, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. See you later. Bye-bye.